Hello, and you here. I'm a doctoral student from UNC Chapel Hill School of Information and Library and Science, and I am researching social movement archives and documents. In this series of videos, I will walk you through a short undergrad course in the basics of Library and Information Science, or LIS. It's modeled after introductory classes from lots of LIS schools or high schools. These are professional schools that train librarians, archivists, information data scientists, informatics researcher, and so on. But instead of long lectures, I will try to deliver as many key points as possible to you in a shorter format. That means you will learn the basic vocabularies that allow you to understand what people are talking about, and you will have enough keywords to do your own research and learn more. But you will probably learn things in more details in a proper semester-long class. And of course, introductory classes will always differ a little bit from school to school and from instructor to instructor, so some part of this short course may overlap with certain school courses, while other things will be a little bit mix and match. So what will we cover here? In this first lesson, I will review the LIS field in general and discuss where people are doing their research. And I will also show you some career tracks that you can pursue in iSchools. Then in the second lesson, we will go on discussing core information theories how we construct information out of physical things or documents that we interact with every day. In the third lesson, we will talk about categorization, or the casual act of grouping things, versus classification, which is a systemic formal technique for coding objects into institutional structures like libraries and databases. We will also briefly talk about how to retrieve this coded information, which is a field of information retrieval. In the fourth lesson, you will learn more critical perspectives and theories from the sociological part of LIS. There, we will talk about science and technology studies, or STS, technology history, labors and values, and ethics of our professional work. And finally, to sum up this course, we will talk about some actionable strategies moving forward, i.e. how can we reimagine re and redesign existing information systems. Okay, to start with, let's talk about LIS, Library and Information Science. Before iSchools became iSchools in the 2000s, they used to be library schools. These schools primarily trained professional workers in library, archives, and museums, also known as LEMs. Libraries, archives, and museums each have a pretty long history, and they take different shapes in different cultures around the world. What we are looking at today is their Western modern shape that dates back to the 19th century, when first modern library schools were established in the US and in Europe. On the library side, governments found public libraries and tasked them to educate citizens. And this is still very much the case today. In libraries, librarians make collection decisions as to what books and materials to buy or accept, um, how to categorize and organize them, and how to help people find what they need. Of course, the public here is itself a problematic concept. In the US during racial segregation, for example, the public meant especially the white public, excluding black, indigenous, and people of color, and in lots of cases, also excluding women and other genders. So when we think about libraries today, we still need to reflect on whose and what interests they serve. Adjacent but different, public archives saved huge bunches of governmental papers and historical records. These materials serve as evidence to inform government decisions, and they also hold government decisions and public incidences accountable for the future, which usually means at least decades, if not centuries. And of course, they are important materials for any kind of historical research. Similar to libraries, archives also are part of a troubled history. Here, archives habitually treat records of well-established institutions better, while ignoring materials, histories, and knowledges from marginalized communities. This is, again, still very much an ongoing issue for archivists today to solve. Still a bit different, modern museums grew out of curiosity cabinets where people collected objects for display and attraction, and later some of them became public institutions and others non-profit educational organizations. Some museum objects are local stuff, while a lot more came from around the world by explorations, this used to be a more problematic business than today. During colonial time, colonizers looted materials and even humans from colonized areas and put them on display for Western audiences. Today, museums around the world are still slowly repatriating these objects to their original communities as part of that history. 
museum works focus a lot more on curating exhibitions compared to archives or libraries. So they tend to bring in lots of people like artists, historians, anthropologists, and so on. But long-term preservation of museum collective objects is also equally important. After all, all of these LAM institutions are meant to pass knowledge on from generation to generation. Now, if we think of library science as long-term public stuff, then maybe we can say information science is a bit more ephemeral and corporate oriented. But in reality, both fields have some traditions and cutting edge technologies, and both also have their parts in public and private sectors. What we call information science today grew out of the 1950s and 60s trend of social sciences and communication engineering. And it was part of the efforts to make studies of documents, communications, and society more scientific and systemic. In 2005, a set of North American schools founded iConference, and it gradually became the conference of LIS schools all over the world. Information science also became part of this new iSchool model, combining library science and information science under the same umbrella. One important part of information science is record or data management. Let's go back to the 1950s and 60s. After World War II, with populations and economies fast growing again, people needed to collaborate on larger and larger scales across groups and areas. This generated lots of paper records for coordination and decision making, and people increasingly needed machine systems to sort and search for useful information among huge piles of papers. These machines are, guess what, then new technologies like punch card sorters and early digital computers, this was also a time when scholarly research grew fast and generated lots of publications and data collections. Data management was meant to help governments, corporate managers, and scholars make use of these records and systems. This big social and technical change broke into many new disciplines. Library science took up some of the record management specialties, while business school also picked up data management and data analysis, Computer science also came into shape during this same time, dealing with the formalization and analysis of data. And similar was information science. Much later, we have data science, and AI is now becoming a new discipline, which brings us back to where we are today. This entire realm of record management touches database design, search algorithm, information retrieval, user interface design, human-computer interaction, data mining, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so on. Another founding part of information science is communication. It began when researchers eyed on telecommunication engineering problems like encryption, networks, and signal transmission. Lots of these problems came into the front during World War II, where keeping communication channels connected and safe became very high stake. Researchers turned communications into mathematical models, so engineers could focus on solving quantified problems transmitting and encrypting signals without concerns with specific texts or meanings. The internet itself also came as a communication issue. When Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union threatened centralized communication infrastructures, internet came as a way to guarantee controls and commands without any central point. Cybernetics, or the theories of feedbacks and controls, also have some relationships here as well as in AI research. More importantly, beyond mathematical models and technical research on data and communication, library and information science today also brings in aspects from philosophy, sociology, cultural anthropology, material studies, and so on. Critical data studies make clear that data are not facts, but arbitrary measurements and human judgments. Critical archival studies creatively examine and rethink archives with humanity's imagination. Media and communication studies enrich social and human contents beyond mathematical models of communication, helping people understanding things like misinformation, disinformation, mass media, and social media. Infrastructure studies and science and technology studies, or SDS, use human-centered critique to question technology's histories and developments. Document studies and knowledge organization research concern themselves with abstract phil philosophical problems like what information is and how it is structured. Political economy examines the human cost behind the neutralized and naturalized systems that exploit people's labor by race, gender, and social causes. 
So in all, LIS today is a very elective field and high schools tend to be very diverse places, at least intellectually. LIS works are often practice oriented, but also have their critical course. They don't just focus on very specific mathematical questions, nor are they pure philosophical speculations. Personally, I find LIS a good place to be in, but of course, it has its own drawbacks and problematic traditions, as I mentioned before, and you gotta make that decision for yourself. So, with all that field overview and history in mind, what can you actually do with a degree in LIS? Well, honestly, undergrad programs in LIS are relatively new, so information about undergrad career path is a little bit scarce. Maybe let's look at the master's track for some inspiration. So here I'm referring to a list of specializations for master's students at UNC Chapel Hill School of Information and Library Science. Here you can see how the potential careers boil down to. Disclaimer here. I'm a current doctoral student, so this is a quite subjective orb. On the library science side, you can see many librarianship tracks like academic libraries. These are usually university librarians who help students and faculties find scholarly works. Um, there's a digital libraries, digital humanities track focusing on digital tools. Media librarians specialize in multimedia and visual resources. You get instructional librarianship focus on teaching. And then there's a public librarianship probably among the most omnipresent careers, providing local communities all over the country with basic education and information resources. The archive and museum side here at UNC Seals is lumped into this umbrella track called Archives and Record Management, or ARM track. Then on the information science side, we can see a few more tracks. There's the data science, data analytics, database track, training people to be data scientists, data analysts, or database managers. Uh, you have information retrieval and text mining, that's where people focus on text data and also work with text-based search algorithms and natural language AI models. The user experience human-computer interaction track is a front-end people researching and creating better user interfaces. There's also a quite specialized environmental informatics track that focuses on GIS or Geographic Information System. And also not listed here, SEALS also holds a Carolina Health Informatics Program, or CHIP, in connection with UNC School of Public Health, School of Medicine, and School of Nursing. That is a graduate program for biomedical and health information research. And finally, you will also find some more research-focused tracks. Sociology and Political Economy Research goes under Information Society title. And there's also the Information Organization, Information Systems track, focusing on critiques more towards the humanities side. So again, these areas could differ from school to school because their faculty capacities and their education goals differ. So for your reference, here's a similar page from University of Washington High School, and they are a more information science focused place. Here you don't see any library or archive tracks. Instead, they have specializations in cybersecurity and software development. Um, or this one, this one is from California's San Jose State University School of Information. Here they don't offer much corporate-oriented information science training, nor do they do that much research. Instead, SJSU's program focuses on getting students into librarian and service careers. Of course, what you are seeing here are all master's programs. So right now, undergrads as you probably are, your bachelor's degree in information science could launch you into the IT industry similar to those in computer science or data science, with some more training in the critical approach. Or if you're interested in library, archive, or museum work, you probably need to take a master's program titled MSLS or MLIS at some point. Of course, you could also have bachelor's degrees in other subjects and on top of that, get a master's degree in library science or information science as a kind of uh, professional credit. These are all viable career options down the road. So that will conclude our very first lesson in information science and also library science. I hope you have a clearer, bigger picture of the LS field now and before. Although this is just through my personal lens and I am just being as comprehensive as I can. In the next lesson, I will introduce some core theories of the information science field, and this will ground you better in the discipline language. It will also help you see where some different theories and subfields connect with each other. I will see you next time. Until then, stay informed and stay well. Peace.